Welcome to yet another Funky Day devotional. Um, today's verse of the day is Zechariah 14, verse 9, which says, The Lord will be king over the whole earth. On that day there will be one Lord, and his name the only name. And that's Zechariah 14, verse 9. So, we are going to be reading a devotional called, No More Dying to Do. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. And that's Hebrews 2, verse 9. Death, it's not a popular topic, even amongst believers. In fact, a great many are just plain scared of it. Oh yes, they talk about having eternal life. Yet when the devil tries to threaten their earthly survival with sickness or calamity, they panic. Why? Because they haven't learned to look at death through God's eyes, even though their spirit has been made immortal. They haven't renewed their minds to include the truth. If they had, when the devil tried to push their panic button, they'd just laugh and say, You can't scare me, devil. I've done all the dying I'm ever going to do. That's true, you know. The, words, the word of God says that you, as a born-again believer, are never to see death. John 8, verse 51. Jesus has been your substitute. He suffered death so that you wouldn't have to. And he was raised from death. Hebrews 2, 14 to 15 says, destroying him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and delivering them through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. If you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, the only death you'll ever experience is behind you now. It occurred the instant you received Christ at that moment your old self, the one whose nature was sin and rebelled against God, died. Your body didn't die, but your spirit man, the real you, died to Satan and all of his works. You became a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Immortal and absolute and capable of death. When you're finished with your work on the earth, you're not going to die. You're simply shed your earth, earthly shell and relocate to a far more glorious place. Go to the Word and get God's perspective on death. Make a study of it. Once the reality of your immortality begins to dawn on you, the devil will never be able to threaten you with it again. Scripture reading is Hebrews 2, 9 to 15. And we're going to read that in the NIV. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. Verse 10, In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers or sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here I am, uh, the children God has given me. 14, since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. So I'm going to read the footnotes here. It says for Hebrews 2.11, the Greek word for brothers and sisters, uh, Adelphoi, refers here to, uh, to believers, both men and women, as part of God's family. Also in verse 12 and in 3, 1, 12, 10, 19, 13, 22. Hebrews 2, 12 is a reference to Psalm 22, 22. Uh, Hebrews 2, 13 is in reference to Isaiah 8, 17. And uh, Hebrews 2, 13 is in reference to 8, 18. So now we need to get all sales down to Hebrews. Hebrews, Hebrews. Hebrews, Hebrews, right? I'm sure we've all heard that joke. In the New Testament, we are going somewhere around Acts. Is it? I think Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and then I think Hebrews. I'll be honest. Oh, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, and Timothy, Hebrews. Wow! I need to memorize the all the books of the Bible. Hebrews 2, 
And we are, where are we here? 9 to 15. God's grace to us led Christ to his death. Jesus did not come into the world to gain status or political power, but to suffer and die so that we could have eternal life, bringing many children into glory. It is difficult for us to identify with Christ's servant attitude. Perhaps we need to evaluate our own motives. Are we more interested in power or participation, domination or service, or getting or giving? A lot of people are definitely thinking about getting. Even me, I need to figure out, you know, where does my money come from? How do I want to spend my future? But you know what? When I do that, I actually forget that it all comes from God, right? God's taking care of me thus far. He's going to take care of me for my entire future. So I want to do what God wants me to do. How was Jesus made perfect through a uh, perfect leader through suffering? Jesus' suffering made him perfect leader or pioneer of our salvation. See the notes on 5, 8, and 5, 9. Jesus did not need to suffer for his own salvation because he was God in human form. His perfect obedience, which led him down the road of suffering, demonstrates that he was complete sacrifice for us. Um, through suffering, Jesus completed his work necessary for our own salvation. Our suffering can make us more sensitive servants of God. People who have known pain are able to reach out with compassion to others who hurt. If you have suffered, ask God for how your experience can be used to help others. God, how can our experiences of suffering and our experiences be used to help others? We love you, Lord. We who have been set apart for God's service, cleansed and made holy, sanctified by Jesus now have the same father he has. So he was made, uh, so he has made us his brothers and sisters. Various psalms look forward to Christ and his work in the world. Here, the writer quotes a portion of Psalm 22. A messianic psalm. <sighs> because God has adopted all believers as his children, Jesus calls them his brothers and sisters. Jesus had to become human. Did you know Jesus is your brother? Right? That really struck me when God was like, hey, bro. I'm like, whoa, Jesus, you're, <laughs> much, you're much more than that to me. Good thing scripture backs it up. I'd rather be listening to God than any other voice. Uh, we who have been set apart for God's service, cleansed and made holy, sanctified by Jesus, now have the same father as he has. Made brothers and sisters. Yep. Da -da -da -da. Jesus had to become human so that, that he could die and rise again in order to destroy the devil's power over death. Romans 6, 5 to 11. Only then could Christ deliver those who had lived in constant fear of death and free them to live for him. When we belong to God, we need not fear death because we know that death is only a doorway into eternal life. 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, sort of. We don't really experience death anymore, only life. So, a sting of death is no more. So, the words need some rephrasing there, but it's okay. Christ's death and resurrection set us free from fear of death because death has been defeated. There you go. That's what you should have been saying there in the paragraph above. Every person must die. Well, not true. But, uh, oh yeah, that's right, we need to die to ourselves, right? But death is not the end. Instead, uh, the, it is the doorway to a new life. All who dread death should have the opportunity to know hope that Christ's victory brings. How can you share this truth with those close to you? How can I share this truth? Well, sharing with you guys is, is a step in that direction, right? Um, it says 211 Greek brothers, also in 212, Psalm 22, Isaiah 18:17. 2.14, or has, and 2.17, Greek like the brothers. Thank you, God, that you call us family. Thank you, God, that, that you get to be our brother, Yeshua. That's crazy. Mind explosion. And you call us friend, and that's also pretty crazy. And not only that, you, we call you Abba, Abba Father. That's pretty, pretty amazing to call a, a God your father. Oh, oh, I need a little bit of stretching. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd work on our hearts. I, pray, I just praise you, God, for for wonderful friends and family and uh, for those we, we love and care about, God. Thank you, God, for for uh, bringing me uh, across and around the world and back to Canada and, and out again, God. You said I would travel more with you, not less. So I've been experiencing that, actually. It's quite wonderful, traveling far more than I ever have in my life. And God, I pray that um, that you continue to bless uh, not only those that are listening and watching, that you continue to bless uh, those around us as well, that we would be a good influence, Father. But 
Um, but at the end of the day, we're not the ones really to be the influence God you are. Um, so I pray that we would just keep pointing the way back up to you. And somebody would point at us and go, hey, he's, he's doing good. Why don't you be more like Gideon? And go, no, 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 no. Be more like God. <laughs> and point it back up to you, God. Because it's not about us and we're going to fail and let people down. There was a whole conversation I had about expectations with people, God, and that we can't have the expectations that, that, that we place on you, God. God, you can fulfill the expectations, but people cannot. And uh, ministries, organizations, leaders, yada, yada, me, will let people down, God, but you won't. You won't let people down. So we point our, our, our gaze up to you, Father. And it's not that we can't have no expectations on people, which I wish was the case, um, but we can have little expectation of them, Father. But we can have great expectation of you. Uh, you call us to be perfect as you are You are perfect, God. Actually, if there's anybody who's putting high expectations or a high bar on us, it's you. <laughs> um, but that's because you believe in, in us, God. Um, uh, I do say this with a little bit of sorrow. Most brothers and sisters are not very encouraging, <laughs> especially in the church families. They'll put you down, say things like, they've said to me, Gideon, you'll never change, right? And uh, guess what? I'm not God, so I, I must change. And God's the only one who was and is and will ever be. That's why it's a word from Satan, because it's so inaccurate. Um, we are called to uplift our, our brothers and sisters and to slash down the enemy and slash down the enemy of ourselves with that sword of the Spirit. So help us to really do that, God. Help us to walk in a way of moving in that direction, even when people are evil. That's a hard one. When someone says you're ugly and you go and you say you're beautiful. <laughs> when they say I hate you and you say I love you. And when they, they say, you know, I wish you'd die and you say I wish you'd live. <laughs> God, help us to really, really, really bless others around us. With our words, with our attitude, with our work ethic, God. And to remember who we're actually working for. It's you. You see all things, God. So we're trying to do a good job for you, Heavenly Father doing good work in the field and bringing many to come to know the glory and the truth of you, Yeshua. Thank you, God, for this channel. Thank you, God, for the opportunity with YouTube. And I, I really do encourage others to do their devotions up here, too, so other people can see and be encouraged, God, and be uplifted. We love you, Lord, and pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful day. Shalom, shalom.